In 1907, the AMA, American Medical Association, involved the Carnegie Foundation in elaborating a book-length study of medical education in the United States and Canada, also known as the Carnegie Foundation Bulletin No. 4. The author, Abraham Flexner, was an ambitious educator, neither a physician nor a medical scientist, but the brother of Simon Flexner, employed by the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research. Later on, Abraham Flexner became the first director of the Rockefeller Philanthropy Programs in Medical Education. Andrew Carnegie was regarded as the second richest man in history after John D. Rockefeller. While Carnegie played a leading role in the American steel industry and education, Rockefeller was interested in oil industry and medical research. Abraham Flexner's report was published in 1910 and the purpose was to improve the quality of medical service by establishing professional medical education based on mainstream scientific principles. But what was accepted as science in the early 20th century? The theory of materialism, rising in the 17th century, holds that the only existing thing is matter, everything is composed of material, and all phenomena, including consciousness, human soul and spirit, are the results of material interactions. In other words, matter is the only substance. Scientific materialism, physicalism, became the philosophical position of the early 20th century. The main statement of physicalism is that there are no kinds of things other than physical things. When a hypothesis is repeated long enough, it often becomes a fundamental rule of life. It is assumed to be true. Before the Flexner Report was released, Twice as many physicians practiced alternative medicine than conventional allopathic medicine, and medical knowledge was taught in small private schools all over the USA. The report changed everything, and backed by the police power of each American state, medical schools were obliged to follow the trend set by the Carnegie Foundation. The human body belongs to the animal world. It is put together of tissues and organs. It grows, reproduces itself, decays, according to general laws. It is liable to attack hostile physical and biological agencies. Herbs, homeopathy, chiropractic and massage were demoted as quackery. Small medical schools were either closed or merged into universities financially supported by industrial companies. In less than 10 years, the number of medical schools dropped from 650 to 50. The number of medical students decreased from 7,500 to 2,500 as they were unable to afford the high education fees. The report included a detailed regulation of medical education and pharmacology as the only solution against dreadful diseases. According to the present day consequences of the report, no medical school can be created without the permission of government and medical research adheres fully to the protocols of scientific research. Of the 1910s, materialism, medication and vaccination. Supply of physicians were restricted, incomes of the remaining practitioners raised and conventional medical schools began to be centralized. In 1997, the WHO obtained full control over medicine as the validity of the Flexner Report was extended worldwide. And what was the long-term result of reforming the medical education and practice? Hardly any news in the media. According to the 2003 medical report, Death by Medicine, 783,936 people in the United States die every year from conventional medical mistakes. This is 16,400% of the victims of September 11, 2001, equivalent to six jumbo jet crashes a day for an entire year. A 
106,000 of the nearly 800,000 cases are from prescription drugs. The United States spends $282 billion annually on deaths due to medical mistakes or iatrogenic deaths. According to a 1995 US iatrogenic report, the annual automobile accident mortality rate is 45,000. On the other hand, annually over a million patients get injured in hospitals, and 280,000 of these cases result in death. In 2004, the USA spent $1.4 trillion, 15.5% of the GDP on healthcare. More than one third was paid to the pharmaceutical industry. After 100 years, we must raise the question, what went wrong? Despite the huge amount of money accumulated in the pharmaceutical industry, there are more dreadful diseases and sick people today than ever. You will find the answers in the Flexner Report, a documentation that created and enabled the terms of a centralized medical system and pharma industry to take over control.